I'm Scott Allen Miller, this is my life living in Latin America. Today I want to give some travel tips, some guidance to help you guys find your way from wherever you are to wherever you want to go, but we're going to focus a little bit on good ways to get from, say, the United States to Nicaragua as a specific example, but what we're going to be talking about here for the most part is going to be very general information that is good for all travelers who are looking to go anywhere. And if you're an expat or looking to become an expat, then there's a really good chance that a regular amount of travel between regions is something you're going to need to be able to do efficiently. So this may be even more important for you than it is for regular travelers. All right, all that sound good? Let's get to that after that bump. It's really just an excuse to show off my new pink hat anyway. So here in Nicaragua, we don't have a lot of flights. So people who are looking to come here are often struggling to find the best flights. Like that's just going to happen. It's a challenge, but it's not that bad if you know what to do. And we have some guidance on this, but I don't feel that it's enough to put all the pieces together. I was just talking to someone who's a regular viewer of the show, knows all the stuff, knows the times, the airlines, everything, but was unable to find the right flights. Why did this happen? Well, it turns out he was going through a travel agent. So there's something you need to know about travel agents. The idea sounds great. You have someone that you pay that's going to give you guidance and information on how to travel places. But travel agents, unfortunately, are just like salespeople in other industries. They are not under normal circumstances. In theory, you could find a specialty concierge service, but it doesn't make very much sense the way the travel agents work. This is how things work the world over. It could be someone who is a uh, buyer's agent trying to get you into a house. It could be someone who's trying to sell you a car or whatever. Yes, you may be paying them. In some cases, you may not be paying them directly. In some, you may be. And in others, they're simply making their money from the vendors that they're selling to you. For example, travel agents may be someone you pay, or you may use them for free and you go in and they just take care of everything. And you wonder, I wonder how they're making their money. Well, they're making their money by not giving you a good deal. Right? If they were giving you the best possible deal, if they were doing all the research, first of all, it'd be very hard and expensive for them to do. They couldn't reasonably do it. They Travel agents are not in a role where it's easy to go out and actually be knowledgeable about the industry that you're in. Travel agents don't make tons of money. Travel's not super cheap. So to be broadly experienced as a travel agent makes you not want to be a travel agent or being a travel agent makes you not able to get that experience. Either way, it doesn't come together very often. Of course, people who are travel agents often are interested in travel, but they're more likely to have to read about it. They very rarely would have the funds to go out and try lots of different things, especially they couldn't afford to use travel agents because travel agents make everything expensive. Remember, whatever you're doing, that agent has to be paid. I mean, they have to. You got to pay for their office, uh, whatever licensing, deals that they have, equipment, uh, the, their time, all those things plus all the time that they're idle because who's using travel agents these days? Not that many people. So travel agents have to, under normal circumstances, make their money by going to vendors, people who sell airline tickets, hotel reservations, car rentals, and those kinds of things, going to them and saying, hey, I will sell your stuff if you pay me to do so. And so if you're one of those companies, you're an airline, a hotel, a car rental, whatever, are you going to give good deals to those agents when people know to just come to you directly? No, of course not. They're not going to get the best deals. So you have one of two things is going to happen. Either places that are able to mark up somehow, oh, the hotel is going to, you know, give a higher price than usual through the agent. Okay, they can do it that way. Then the agent can be paid out of that increased price. Or, and of course, to some degree, it can come by coming out of their, their marketing budget, right? Well, we didn't have to show ads to this person, so we can take a dollar off the price to give to the agent. That only accounts for like 50 cents to a dollar. It doesn't account for the big money. So they need to charge more under normal circumstances. And of course, they can get around this by saying, well, we're only going to show higher cost rooms or whatever. And the agent simply doesn't get much of a discount and offers to not tell people about cheaper rooms. If you're a car rental company, they're going to go with ones that either, again, mark up the price or are more expensive. They have to. The car rental places, the hotels, the airlines, whoever who's operating at the lowest possible cost has no way to pay an agent, no way to incentivize them. So if we just have airline A that's operating at rock bottom prices, they're going to charge you $60 to go somewhere. And you have airline B that's doing the exact same flight, but charging 300. One of them has a very large budget to take a little bit of it and to incentivize an agent to say they're the only airlines or to claim they're the better ones or to somehow promote them. So for example, we have multiple airlines coming in here from the Southeastern United States into Nicaragua. Just an example, but a real world one. 
One of them charges not a ton, but a lot more than the other, orders of magnitude more, between three and 600% more under normal circumstances. And under some circumstances, it can get as much as 1,000% more, but that's getting pretty extreme. But these are big numbers, huge increases. The difference in their margins are staggering. One of them is only available when you look at its own website. The other is available through all those services that make money by reselling flights, Kayak, Priceline, and your local agent. So if you go to any of those services, it could be an online service, it could be an in-person agent, any of those things, they need to get paid. And so they're only going to list airlines that agree to pay them. It's the only way they can keep themselves in business. So by going through those services, by not going directly to the airlines, by all intents and purposes, you're guaranteeing that no good options will be presented to you. They can't because in travel, in, in hotels, in the, the margins on these things, when they're good, when they're good deals, are extremely narrow. And so in order to say you have a hotel that costs $80 a night and they're barely able to operate at that price, they're barely able to keep the hotel open, you go to an agent who needs to make $10 on that transaction, either they have to raise that to $90 or they have to find a different hotel because that hotel can't take $10 off their price and still make enough profits to bother having you as a guest. That's a problem for a lot of places. So by going to those agents, you're just guaranteeing that they have to be getting paid to give you bad recommendations. Right? That is the entire mechanism. That is the only reason that those airlines, that those uh, car rentals, that those hotels are willing to work with those agents is because they encourage them not just to recommend them over other things, but to recommend less than ideal situations. If it was the ideal situation, you could find it on your own pretty easily. So how do you work around this? So it takes a little bit more research. The idea that you can just go to an agent, you can just go to a, a kayak.com and have everything taken care, care of for you is really enticing. I don't want to do research. I don't want to have to know. Of course. And we all do it for quick research on places. But people who are in the know are going directly to the good airlines, getting better service at lower cost. And that's often how you get more flexibility because even within the airlines that are available, the best deals are often not available through the agents, through those websites or whatever. If they have to lower their price that much, they'll take them off of those services because they aren't willing to entice you with the super low price and push through an agent at the same time. It's gonna be one or the other in most cases. And this is basic business logic. This isn't something weird. It isn't unexpected. It is exactly how you would expect anyone to behave where you have an incentivized agent who is primarily paid or possibly entirely paid by the people who are making the products. Now, if you were paying the agent and they made a promise that they would only represent you and they were not going to take any money from anything else and they're just working as, a, as an agent doing research for you, that would be quite expensive. You'd have to pay a lot of money if you think about how much a person costs per day to do all the research for you for a trip could easily take three to eight hours. In many cases, it wouldn't take them an entire day. It is what they do for a living. But in theory, it might. When I do research for people, I easily put in multiple days doing their research for a trip. I mean, if they're just coming, if they just need flights to come visit me, no, I can do that in 20 minutes. But if we're talking about putting together a trip, finding them a hotel, finding them the right place to stay, putting together a light itinerary, I easily spend a full working day doing that. I don't do that professionally. I'm just saying when my friends ask me to do it. But I often, they often ask me because it's a place I know. Your travel agent, those online services, they don't know those places. They're just looking them up in books. They have to do more research. They have to go watch a Rick Steves episode to find out what it's like, what you might want to do, and figure out what areas of the city are good and safe, call, so call around, get other people who may have been there, find those things out. They generally don't have those resources at hand. So when you go to them, if you are going to pay them, it could be a very expensive service. You may have to pay for an entire day of their time plus their office expense, their real estate expense, their licensing, their, their insurance, their, their taxes, right? All those things have to come from somewhere and you're the only source of it. So that could be an extremely expensive endeavor. You easily could be looking at costs far in excess of two or $300 as an absolute minimum. I don't know how you could possibly do it for only $100, but two or $300 starts to be, okay, you could see how it could be done. But you're talking about a travel agent who's you know, really struggling to pay their bills unless you're in a really low cost location because that's just not a lot of money when you also have to pay for your marketing. And remember, you have to have uh, all the time that there's no one there. You may be the only customer for a day, but what if you're the only customer for a week? You may have to spend $500 to $1,000 to cover the cost of that person being idle. It's just how business works. So that makes it necessarily quite expensive for you to get 
real advice. But if someone's just going to go on a website real quickly, find whoever's going to pay them, not you, the best money for convincing you to take a flight, then they can do that very quickly. And they're getting paid by that person. They know it's guaranteed. They're just going to book it. Boom. They've got their money. And then if you take that trip or not, they're good. They don't have to worry about you disputing it or anything because they got paid by a big company that pays them all the time. So if you want good deals and you want flexibility, what do you do? Well, in most cases, you need to do a little bit of research and you can do this a number of ways. We're gonna talk about flights because that was our topic today. And specifically for coming here to Nicaragua, nearly everyone, we say go directly to Spirit. Spirit is the one airline that provides really good deals and good flights coming into Nicaragua. You can look at others. There are others that are perfectly okay to fly, but there's none coming in that I know of that have consistently good prices and consistently reliable flights. Nearly all the others either are super expensive and or are running with a reputation of booting people from flights, often running the famous scams that you can, you'll hear about these everywhere, right? They'll claim you need a COVID vaccine to come in. Clearly untrue, but what are you going to do when they lie about it? There, you have no recourse, right? You're in a third party country normally. Uh, they'll, they'll come up with an excuse to make it nearly impossible to prosecute them. So you're stuck. If they decide to simply deny you a flight, if they say, well, we, we have some paperwork you're supposed to have filed. You didn't file it. We didn't file it. So that's too bad, right? Even if it's for them to file, I I've had airlines multiple times be like, oh, we didn't file your paperwork. Sorry, you're booted from the flight. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, it's common to make up, for example, here in Nicaragua, you never need an onward ticket when arriving, but it's really common for airlines to make that claim. And if you have an onward ticket, say a bus ticket, they then will make the claim, oh, it has to be within airlines. You get an airline one, then they say, well, it has to be with our airlines. They always have a way to come up with an excuse that you can't do anything about because they're claiming a law of a country you're going into while you're in a country that is not that country. So you're in a situation where you're kind of in a no man's land. How are you going to work around it? So you can take other airlines, but you're taking your chances. With Spirit, we've had really good, uh, everyone I know, like literally no one has reported problems to me and more than any other airlines, I would say more than 50% of all flights that I speak to people about is on Spirit because they're the ones that are cheap, they're the ones that fly direct, they have the best deals. Like it's obvious that that's why people are flying that. So with Spirit, you simply go to spirit.com and look up what you need, right? Everything is there, every schedule, every flight, every price, really simple. No one is going to be cheaper. And most places will not list Spirit at all because it blows away the prices of all the ones that pay them lots of money. If a kayak or a travel agent decided to use Spirit, they would instantly go out of business because there's no way for Spirit to on the, because often we're seeing flights as low as like $38 into the country. That's rare. 42 is the cheapest that I've ever seen going out. 68 is the cheapest that I know anyone's actually gotten. Like you got to really work at this, but I flew in from New York, not from Miami for 106, just recently with my whole family, obviously each of us were 106. So those prices are very real. This is what we really pay to come and go from the country. So if you're going to spirit.com, you can get these great deals. And of course, I have talked before, I, I pay attention to which airlines I use. And I have a, uh, a first of all, a mileage, a points account with all the airlines that I use. And I have with the ones I use most, Spirit, I have a Spirit credit card. I actually pay for the upgraded one and it maximizes my points. That doesn't make sense for most people or a lot of people, but those are things to consider, right? When you focus on buying direct, you get a lot of these advantages. And if you go through an agent, you go through a lot of those extra websites, they, they'll cut off these, maybe you won't get the miles, maybe you only get partial miles, maybe you won't get the bonuses from your card. There's a lot of things that can work against you. A lot of the things that they advertise as special features may not be offered to you because you went through a third party channel. So always be wary of that, even when you're getting the deals you think look pretty good. So this is an example. If you use Spirit to fly here to Nicaragua, you're likely going to pay extremely little and get really reliable flights. With all the information, doing your research is super easy. You don't have to look around at a lot of airlines if you don't want to. You just look at the one. That's the one that's good. See what's available. See what the prices are, and you're good to go. You want to compare it? Great. The only other one that flies out of Miami that we know of is Avianca. Go check them out. You can compare them side by side. Easy peasy. That's actually no more work, and in some cases, it might be less than going to an agent or a third-party site. Why go through all that work. Now, if you had 100 airlines, I understand that would be hard to do on your own, but you don't in this situation. You just have a couple. If you're looking at going somewhere else, the same rules apply. Now, if you're looking to fly into New York, Los Angeles, those get tough. You have to do your research a lot, but 
there's a lot of research out there for those locations. But let's say you're flying into some place that's a little bit less well known than those, but still a major location, such as Lima, Peru. Okay, so you want to fly into Lima, Peru, you can go and watch influencers like me who are in Peru and see what they recommend. Just be careful that they're not being paid by those sources, right? I am in no way affiliated with Spirit. I'm just a fan of how well they have treated me and my family. We did have issues with United one time and Spirit stepped in and took care of us and I've been very loyal. They have never let me down, right? So that's why I back them. But they don't give me a penny. They're not aware of this show, I assume. Uh, so, um, but be careful because you could have people who are getting paid by special airlines or paid by, and so do your homework, do your research, but they'll give you leads at the very least. Here's ones to look at. But you can go to uh, things like Flight Aware, Flight Scanner, stuff like that. Look at an airport and see what airlines are available. Get that list. And pretty quickly, you can take some and just eliminate them. Oh, I know this one's expensive. I know this one doesn't go where I need to go, whatever. And then you can look at flight paths and determine who your options are. So for example, when I was flying into Peru, I did this last year, uh, into Lima, I looked and said, well, I could fly out of just a couple places, uh, Liberia, San Jose, Managua. I already knew what the choices were out of Managua. So I looked at Panama City as well because I can get there pretty easily. Looked at those three and discovered that LATAM went where I wanted to go. I went directly to LATAM. I didn't go to some third party site. Maybe I did just to get some quick numbers to get an idea of what other people are doing. Checked out LATAM directly found an amazing price, got an amazing flight at a really good price, and flew down on LATAM. But when I got to Bolivia, LATAM wasn't doing what I needed to do. But I don't push it by saying, well, LATAM has to give me end-to-end -end service or I won't consider them. If I did that, I would not have gotten a good deal at all. I would have had to go through another country. I would have had to pay much more, and it would have been very complicated. But instead, I just took LATAM into Bolivia, and then I switched and went directly to Bolivian Airlines and scheduled the rest of my flights that were inside the country directly with them. And by going directly to LATAM and then directly to Bolivian Airlines, I was able to get the best of all worlds. My flights were all very easy to deal with. I had complete control out of all of them. I got points on all of them. I was able to use whatever cards I wanted to use on all of them. And I got incredibly low prices across the board all by going direct. Now, that doesn't mean you never want to do a single flight from point to point with all the interconnections handled through a single airline. There are times you want to do that. That's a topic for another video. But the idea of going directly to the airlines and participating directly with them, while it may seem like it's going to take you a little bit more work, and in an extreme circumstance it might, we're not talking about a bunch more work. We're talking about a little bit of research, and then the natural thing, the, the place you should go, unless there's a special circumstance, is directly to, if you want to fly into Nicaragua, your flight is Spirit. That is who your good carrier is. You don't want to start by then saying, okay, I know Spirit is the good airlines, but I'm going to go look other places. It's fine to do research, but don't go looking for Spirit somewhere other than Spirit, right? If you want to find out what Spirit's going to cost, just go to spirit.com. No one else has that authoritative information. No one's as up to date. You may find somewhere that's pulling data from there and it's perfectly good, but you're taking your chances. But if you go directly to Spirit, whatever they have, you're going to find out. This is an important process, but I find that people who are not full-time travelers, people who are not really into this process, so often focus on, they've seen the advertising, go to this website and we're gonna evaluate all the flights and we're gonna tell you which one's good. Well, what they don't tell you is they evaluate most of the flights and they only look at the ones that make the money. And they may not even evaluate the flights that you need and so often you'll be told there's no flights when it's really easy to get one. And that is often the case in Nicaragua. People tell me all the time that they went, they asked for flights, they went to an agent, they went to a website, and they say, there are no flights, what are you talking about? And I show them Spirit, and they're like, how are you getting these? And I'm like, how are you not getting them? And then it turns out they're not on Spirit.com. They've gone somewhere else, and of course, why would you expect somewhere else to give you Spirit's information? Maybe they will, but there's no reason to expect it. And that's what they were finding. So it's a really common thing that people have been conditioned because it makes money for all these agencies that they try to pressure you that this is what you're supposed to do. And so people, and especially in the past when people didn't have the internet, you didn't have direct ways to connect to American Airlines and Pan Am back in the day, right? What would you do? You had to go through an agent because an agent was how you connected with them. The agent was a gatekeeper. I used to work in hotels back when agents were still a thing before the internet was providing hotel reservations. And of course we worked with agents all the time and we paid them 
But back then, at least they made sense for the people that were making the reservations. Yes, people could call us directly, but they didn't know how to find us and know that we were an option or that we were close to where they wanted to go. Agents would call us, say, how far are you from this? How, what, how much is this? What can we do? And uh, they would never ask for discounts, right? They would get the highest priced rooms and they would make five or $10 on a room. And that was back when that was a lot of money. That'd be like making 20 or $30 on a room reservation today. I don't know if anyone's making that much, but that's the equivalent of what it was back in the day. Knowing that those processes are old and should not be followed anymore, that there is someone making money and not making money in your interest, they are biased against you, is very important. They are not on your side, they can't be. Their business model doesn't allow it. So for them to stay in business, they have to be doing something at least a little bit bad for you. And this goes the same thing. You want a good deal in a hotel? They're not gonna check Airbnb, they're not gonna check booking.com, they're not gonna compare the pricing in different ways of booking the same place. Even if you wanna go to the Hilton Doubletree in Monopoly, like I sometimes do. Yeah, I could look on booking. Maybe I can save $2. Maybe I can go through some third party thing, save a little bit of money, maybe not save a little bit of money. I can go through an agent, maybe have them hook me up. But if I go directly, I'm able to get my Hilton Honors points. I'm able to use the app and get a bunch of features that I don't get. If I go through booking, I don't get my points and I don't get to use the app. I don't get my digital key and a whole bunch of other things. I don't get the extra upgrades. I don't get priority on things. And when I use my card from Hilton and I use my app from Hilton and I go directly to Hilton, I get super, super secret lower prices as one option. I have higher cost options as well, but I have lower cost ones. I get automatic points upgrades. I get all kinds of little features. I get extra bottles of water and extra greeting and digital key and check in without having to go to the desk, all kinds of things you just give up. And then you have to evaluate that, right? Is this something you want? If you don't care at all, maybe paying extra to an agent because you just don't want to think about it is worth it. But if you want to know where your hotel is, know what time you're checking in, have all these features, be able to reach them. When you're, when you're out traveling, is your travel agent in contact with you in the hotel? Probably not. Unless you have a really high-end concierge service that's putting this together for you, you're going to be left on your own but without the advantages of having been a direct client. So to the hotel, you're not even their guest. It is the agent who is the guest or is the service that is the guest. And there are quite a number of cases, some of the best known services that people often use. Here in Nicaragua, it turns out are a scam. They do not verify the hotels and other services that they sell. They'll take your credit card, they'll charge you, they'll make your reservations at fake places that don't exist. And I'm talking extremely well known, some of the biggest names in travel. And everybody in this region here in Leon, Nicaragua have been burned by people showing up and saying, well, I went to your listing on such and such a site. And I know it's not your site, but it's a famous site they took my credit card, where's my room? We say, we're not on that site. We've never even heard of that site. We've never worked with them. Obviously, we've heard the names. But we're not on there. That's not our problem. That's not our hotel that's on there. That's not our restaurant, our car dealership, whatever that's on there. We don't know who took your credit card, but it was a scam. And they're not checking to see if the hotels they list are real. In some cases, the hotels don't even exist, but more often they do exist. People can find them and they think they're gonna get some kind of deal. So they're able to list it cheaper than the real price take your money, and then when you get there, well, of course they could charge less. They're not actually giving you a room. There's no room at all. So they're all booked or that person hasn't been paid. And then you get really angry customers. The hotels sometimes end up giving away free rooms, trying to keep people from being angry, but the, those people are stealing from the hotels. They're literally threatening them, right? I gave money to some third party. Now you owe me stuff. And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to leave a bad review, right? It's a really good extortion racket. And so that stuff is very real, but you have to be careful with all those third-party sites. You're not booking with that company. Now, some I've used booking.com a lot and I have no question that they are legit. Airbnb, fantastic. Like those are their own properties. They're actually the listing machine for those properties are not a third party. So that stuff tends to be pretty good, but there are ones out there that are not. And you need to be really aware when you're gonna work with an agent or any of those things that you're, they're actually booking with the hotel. And so when you're booking with a hotel, you're booking with an airlines, you wanna make sure you're getting a real reservation from those places. And the best way to do that is by doing it directly yourself. It's honestly the easiest way in most circumstances, and it's the most reliable and gives you the most power when you get there. So with only rare circumstances, would you want to work around that? Maybe use other sources for research, maybe, but in general, go direct, do a little bit of groundwork yourself. There are some cases where it's a little bit harder, right? Lima, Bogota, Buenos Aires, those are gonna be a little bit more complex because there's so many options, but it will only be so complex. You'll be able to narrow things down pretty quickly. If you just do your footwork, go directly to the sources. Don't, don't go some random place, go directly to who's involved 
But Nicaragua, you want to come in, you're coming from the United States, Spirit is your option. You want to come from Mexico, Aeromexico is your option. You want to come from Panama, Copa is your option. You want to come from El Salvador or other points in Central America, it's going to be uh, Avianca through their TACA subsidiary, but it's labeled as Avianca now, it's Avianca El Salvador. And uh, if you want to come in from uh, Cuba, it is the Venezuelan Airlines, whose name I don't know off the Con Viasa, I believe. Uh, and, uh, that is, and then from the United States, you do have the high cost options of American and United. That is about it. Those are the airlines. So having listed those, you can rule out the ones that don't go to the region you want to go to or come from. And then you know how to work with the rest. Just go to them. Even if you want to look at all four American possible airlines, which is Spirit, Avianca, American, and United, how long does it take to go to four websites and check? And then each of them is definitive. You know what the real prices are. You know what the real points are. You know what the real options are. You know what the real rules are. You don't have to worry that a third party site is going to get that information wrong, pass off only some of it, leave you with limitations you didn't know about because it's all your, it's ca caveat emptor, right? It's your job to go check on those things. They're not under any obligation to give you real information, real prices, right? So you just need to be very careful. So of course, some people, if you're only taking one vacation and it's not something you do very often and it's a very specialty thing, you may be willing to pay five or 10 times as much for your trip so that you don't have to put as much effort into it. But if you are a regular traveler, if you're on a budget, or if you're a retiree looking to make things stretch a bit farther, it's pretty important to start thinking about how you're able to travel a little bit more intelligently, a little bit more frugally, and you can get a lot more of control, safety, and savings by taking a slightly different approach, doing a little bit of research. And once you know your flight paths, especially if you're like moving to Nicaragua and you're going to be taking a flight between Nicaragua and the United States on a regular basis, learning which airlines to which airports at what time of day, having that just down, knowing exactly how to reach out and deal with them can save you thousands and make a significant difference in your ability to retire early, your ability to get down and retire right away. Everything you do could be a lot easier than maybe just getting that call. Oh, a family member is having a party and they really wish you could be there. And suddenly, instead of feeling like it's too expensive and too hard, you suddenly can just jump on a plane and do it because you have everything at the ready and you're used to it and you know what it's going to cost. You don't have to worry about being surprised with a bunch of costs or just complications. You'll have it all under your belt. Thank you for joining me. Remember, just a little bit of effort can make a huge difference in making your travels safer and more affordable. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, hit that like, share somewhere, tell someone about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And one last favor, check out all these videos that come up on the screen. Go ahead and click on one of those. If those don't strike your fancy, scroll down. YouTube has lots of other videos that are likely to be something you would enjoy just as much.